Today I'm going to be talking about how you can better identify and recognize negative thinking patterns that might be causing symptoms of depression. Hi everyone. In today's video, what we're going to be talking about is how you can better improve your thought awareness and awareness of negative thinking patterns that could be contributing to symptoms of depression. But before I get into that, just a couple of disclaimers to go over. I'm a registered psychologist in the province of British Columbia, Canada, and this video is for informational purposes only. It is not intended as a substitute or replacement for advice from your doctor or mental health professional. Now with those two things out of the way, let's start talking about thought awareness. Um, now one of the things that we know about depression is that it is associated with a lot of negative thinking and a lot of negative thinking that uh, for the most part, people are generally not aware of. And so uh, what typically happens is there are those surface level thoughts that you recognize that could be contributing to uh, feelings of depression. So thoughts about things going wrong, thoughts about failure, uh, thoughts about you know people not liking you, uh, those types of thoughts and we know that people can sometimes recognize those thoughts, but there tends to be this cascading of negative thinking. So one of the things that happens when you think in a negative way is that you tend to think and tends to hook you into even more negative thinking. And so uh, what can sometimes happen is that people will have this negative dialogue that is kind of happening all the time in the background, in the back of their minds, um, when situations arise, um, even just in general, it's kind of like this constant looping and constant playing of negative chatter in the back of your mind that drives these feelings of sadness and depression. And because people tend to have these thoughts regularly, the thoughts can become automatic. What I mean by that is that you can be having these negative thoughts and not even be aware that you're having them. So uh, this can be uh, sometimes a, a bit of a, a weird concept for people to understand is that I can be having negative thoughts but not be aware of thinking about negative things. How does that work? Uh, how can I be thinking without being aware of my thinking? Well, it, it's something that happens all the time. Our minds are, are quite good at being efficient. And so what can happen is you can be thinking multiple things at the same time. And so you can be aware of thoughts that are happening at the forefront of your mind. But in the background, you have uh, a whole bunch of thought processes that are going on that you may not necessarily be aware of. Uh, typing is a good example of this, right? So uh, if you think about when you first started learning how to do touch typing, you had to be very conscious of where you put your fingers, right? You had to be very conscious of where the A key was in context to the S key and the F key and, and those types of things. But over time, as you get more better at uh, typing, you're not really having to think about it. And so you can just type and be focusing more and thinking more about what you're actually typing as opposed to where you're putting your fingers and where the particular keys are. And if you're pretty good at typing and you actually try to think about where you're moving your fingers while you're typing, it'll probably slow you down and mess you up. Um, and so typing is a good example of how you can be thinking these things. You have to, your mind still has to be aware of where the keys are, but you're able to do it automatically while at the forefront of your mind, you're thinking about what you're typing. Well, in depression, what we know is that people tend to have more of these negative automatic thoughts that really drives and fuels uh, the depression cycle. And so, oh, uh, what I'm going to be talking about is some tips and tools uh, for being able to be more aware and better identify 
these negative thinking patterns. And that's through something we call um, thought awareness and improving thought awareness. And the way I like to uh, teach my clients how to become more aware of these negative thinking patterns is to use a tool called a three column thought record. And so the idea of a thought record, and I'll be uh, providing a link to a three column thought record in the description down below. So you can take a look at that, download it and use it to uh, complete thought records on your own if you would like. So the idea of a three column thought record is that it's a tool to help you identify and recognize the negative thoughts that might be contributing to a particular negative emotional state. And so the three columns in the thought record uh, are the situation. So what's happening? Who, what, where, when? Providing essentially the context of what you're experiencing. The second column is, what are the emotions that I'm experiencing in relation to that situation? So when we talk about emotions, uh, they should be described in one word. So things like sad, depressed, upset, frustrated, angry, scared, those types of things. If it's more than one word, you're probably not talking about a, an emotion. You're probably talking about a thought. And we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, now you can have multiple emotions in a particular situation. So for example, you can be frustrated and sad at the same time. So the idea is to list out all of the negative emotions that you're experiencing in that situation. Now, sometimes what can happen is there's not a particular trigger situation that leads to these uh, negative emotions. Sometimes you may just notice that you're feeling sort of down or upset or sad. And so the idea is just work backwards. So you write down the emotions and then think about, okay, what's going on in this situation? So those first two columns of the thought record are the simple part. The third column is the more challenging part for people because we're typically not used to thinking about our thinking. And so this third column is where we talk about the automatic thoughts and where you list the thinking patterns that you're having or the thoughts that you're having in this situation that are contributing to uh, this, these negative emotional states. So, um, what you want to do is to try and think about, okay, what is it that's going through my mind? What is it that I'm thinking about right now that's contributing to me feeling this way? And so the metaphor I like to use with my clients is it's almost like you're, you're dropping a microphone into your brain and you're recording the thoughts that are going on in your mind in that situation. And so to help get at some of these types of thoughts, uh, you might want to ask yourself some questions. Things like, what was going through my mind just before I started to feel this way? What does the situation mean about me, my life, uh, my future? Um, what does this mean about the way other people think about me or the way other people feel towards me? What might this mean about other people in general? What is the worst thing that can happen if these thoughts are true? What am I worried about is going to happen in this situation? Um, is this bringing up any memories or thoughts of negative experiences I've had in the past? So the idea of some of these questions is to try and help you get at some of the, uh, some of the deeper thoughts that might be contributing to the depression. Because like I said earlier, uh, sometimes we're, we're good at identifying just kind of the surface level negative thoughts, but we don't really think about uh, what those thoughts mean and, and sort of drill down and think about um, some of those deeper negative thoughts that might really be fueling the negative emotional states. And so um, the idea is 
you now have completed the thought record. You've recorded the situation, you've recorded the, the emotions, and you've recorded the negative automatic thoughts. What I encourage people to do at this point when they've completed a thought record is to do what I like to call a, a heat check to check whether or not you've actually tapped into the hot thoughts that are really contributing to the negative emotional state. And the way to do this is to take a look at the thoughts that you have in that third column, the automatic thoughts that you've recorded, and ask yourself, okay, if, if these thoughts were true, do the emotions that I have listed down make sense? Essentially, do the thoughts help explain why I'm feeling these negative emotions? So for example, suppose the situation is a uh, guy cuts me off in traffic and my negative emotional states that I have listed uh, is rage and feeling furious. But the only automatic thought that I've put down is maybe he was in a rush to get somewhere. Well, maybe he was in a rush to get somewhere doesn't really explain rage and fury. So what it means is I haven't really tapped into the negative thoughts that are contributing to the emotional state. So it means I may need to dig a little bit deeper and to think uh, a little bit more about what are some of the thoughts that are really going on right now that are contributing to me feeling so angry. So things like, uh, you know, this guy thinks the road belongs to him, or this is just another example of how people step all over me in my life. Uh, one of these days, uh, a Yahoo like this is going to kill me or someone I care about. Or this is just another example of how people are so selfish and how they look after themselves and don't care about anyone. Okay, well, if those are the thoughts that I'm having, that does help explain fury and rage. And so when you've completed a thought record, you wanna do this heat check to make sure you've tapped into uh, the negative thoughts, the hot thoughts that are really fueling your uh, emotional state. Now, uh, the key thing with this thought record is you want to try, if you're gonna do this thought record, what you wanna try and do is to do it as soon as possible, uh, preferably while you're in the emotional state or as soon as you can uh, when you're out of that emotional state. Because a lot of these automatic thoughts are only really accessible while you're in the emotional state. So while you're feeling those negative emotions, that's when you have best access uh, or ability to recognize or be aware of these negative thoughts. So if you try and do this, uh, you know, two or three days after a situation, so it's, it's kind of like trying to think of, okay, well, what was going through my mind? What was I thinking about when my friend said that thing to me that upset me? Well, probably not going to be very good at, at actually tapping into my thoughts if I don't even really remember the situation all that well, or it's hard for me to even uh, remember how I felt in that situation. So as soon as possible, you want to try and complete one of these thought records. And so the more you do this, the better you get at identifying and being aware of negative thinking patterns that are contributing to negative emotional states. And with greater practice, what can happen is you're able to start doing this in your mind. You don't need to pull out one of these paper thought records and fill it out every time. Uh, you can be doing it in your head and thinking, okay, well, I, I notice I'm feeling really frustrated. What's going on? What is it that I'm thinking right now? And in doing so, you take those automatic thoughts and you make them conscious. And so then you can begin to really examine those thoughts because uh, unless you're aware of these negative thinking patterns, you're not gonna be able to challenge them. You're not gonna be able to actually question whether or not these negative thinking patterns are true or real. And we'll be talking about how you challenge these negative thinking patterns in an upcoming video. So that's how you use a thought record to improve 
thought awareness and better be and to better be able to recognize uh, negative thinking patterns that might be contributing to depression. I would love to hear your thoughts or questions about this, so please leave me some comments in the comments section down below. If you've been enjoying my videos and would like to see more, uh, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell, and you'll be alerted every week when I post a new video. As always, thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video, and I will see you in the next one.